chapter, verse by verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Hey, we're ready to get back in our Father's Word. Left us hanging the last time without completing this 13th verse to find out who this 666 is. And that's so exciting, but we'll find out here in a little bit. Let's recap this 13th chapter just a little bit. You must remember you have two beasts that are mentioned. They rise from the sea of people, documentation, Revelation 17, 15, where waters are people. It simply means that a one world political system rises from the people to the world. It, that shouldn't be a great uh, uh, one world uh, ism. It shouldn't be something to be wondered at anymore. As a, great, as a matter of fact, even at this time, you're hearing a great deal about the world global economy. Now, it hasn't been too many years till that would be a very strange statement, the global economy. What does that say to you? You see car makers merging with car makers of another country um, in mass. You don't have, I mean, the Ford and the Chevy, my Lord, pretty soon it's going to be the Ford this or the uh, that this and so forth, and it's world instead of um, nation. And why am I saying this? Wake up. It's happening. The IMF is where your money goes to bail out the rest of the world. So we like it or lump it, friend, but it's biblical. It's happening. You hear, and I'm not saying it's de facto yet because it isn't. But certainly if you can't smell the coffee while it's just beginning to perk, you're in trouble. Okay, so anyway, we see this first religious political system rise from the people and then whoa, 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 pretty soon about the 11th verse, bingo, on cue comes the religious beast. And he's not really a beast, it's simply uh, Revelation chapter 9 identified him. He is the son of perdition. He is a polyon, which is Satan's name in the Greek, a babdon, which is his name in the Hebrew. So it shouldn't, there's no mystery to it. And now we're going to have a little bit of a mystery as we open. And it spoke of the great wonders and miracles he would perform in the sight of people. And of course, Paul would say the same thing as we went to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and covered those events step by step. So now the religious beast is before, has made the world accept his one world global economy and system. Like it or lump it. And you either receive in your forehead, that is to say you think in those terms, and even in your hand or you after he's here, you won't even work for it. Receiving a mark in your right hand is a, he is a figure of speech that means you are, uh, the right hand is strength, don't let the left hand's people get all shook up or anything, but the right hand stands for power, strength, work. So you're working, actually many Christians will be working for Satan at that time in ignorance. Now having said that, that being the 16th verse, let's cover the last part of it. Let's see what the Father's Word has to say. You're going to have to put your thinking caps on. Stay with me. However, it is very simple. It will flow for you. True wisdom is to be able to take that that might seem complicated and simplify it whereby all can understand. Never forget that. Verse 17 of Revelation chapter 13, do not forget the word revelation means the uncovering or the unveiling, to make known. Verse 17 reads, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Now I want to read again from that verse 16. Where did they receive this mark? They received it in, uh, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now you're going to have a bunch of jokers that are going to come along and tell you about chips and 
and uh, tattoos and brands. Satan's not stupid. So let's, do you know what the word in, I-N, is in the Greek? It's in. And do you know something? It means the same thing as the English I-N. It means inside your forehead. Now you can't see what's tattooed inside someone's forehead. God knows what's in someone's forehead. Why he, he's the, um, and I'm thinking in Greek because I have a title, title of a tape, the heart knower. Why? Because cardio, uh, the word cardio is utilized in the Greek to say that God can read your mind. A heart usually translates mind. Why? It's just a pump, but it's talking about the one in here. This is why that back in the ninth chapter, Satan was told when he was cast out to this earth, hey, you can go down there and you can sting the idiots. All right? You know who the idiots are? Well, I shouldn't call them idiots. I should say the biblically illiterate. You can go down and whack them and move them around Tell them you're going to fly them out or anything you want to. But you leave those alone that have the seal of God in their forehead. What's in your forehead? Your brain. Use it. Being, receiving the seal of God is quite simply to have God's word, his truth, in your forehead, in your brain, in your mind, whereby you know what your father expects you to do. It was real sad when some little lady in a question, I believe it was in the last lecture, he told, this pastor told the little lady, you don't have to understand Revelation or God's Word. God's going to lead you and tell you what to do. Well, what in heaven's name did he think the Word was? It's God's way of telling us, leading us, telling us what to do. Talk about the blind leading the blind. We have a strange set of pastorships in this world today. If you've got a good one, you better hang on to him because there are far and few in between. That is to say someone that teaches God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. So <clears throat> there we have it, <clears throat> the, na the name of the beast. But what is this? Or the number of his name. What does that mean? Well, verse 18. Now, now pay attention to what we're reading. Watch your subject. Watch what is being addressed. Don't cloud it, as some men would have you do. Here is wisdom, period. Now stop and think. In other words, the statement that's about to be made will reveal something of wisdom to you. Okay, you ready for it? Let's go with it. Let him that hath understanding... Now, that, let's see, hath understanding, what does that mean? Someone that kind of understands God's word. If you're biblically illiterate, probably it's going to fly right over your head. In other words, let's stick to the parameters that are given. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. Now, what is it you're told to do there? Is you're told not to worship the beast? No, that isn't what it said. Did it tell you that you should recognize him instantly? No, that isn't what it said. Let's read it again. I'm, and I'm not talking down to you. I want you to know that. But I want you to learn to read what God's word states. Let him with understanding count. See O-U-N-T. That's what you're supposed to do, is count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Now, you already know who the man is. God has already told you in the ninth chapter plus the twelfth chapter when he was cast from heaven down here to play super prophet or antichrist, you know who the man is. And his number is six hundred threescore and six. Um, um, those of you that have strong concordances, you'll find this word. You make a note of it because you, unless you're pretty um, said in Greek, you're going to have trouble with it. 5516 in the Greek dictionary, you'll find the 666, all right? Because, see, there were no numbers in Greek or Hebrew numerics. Each letter in the Gemetra 
each letter had a value and these were these letters were the value it's interesting I'm going to talk along here and then I'm going to get to how you count because that's what you're supposed to do all right I mean you can't understand that from the verse if you have understanding you're going to count so six 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 being the number of man and we're told right here it's a man we're talking about as um, as the hallmark mint mark is to silver six is the hallmark of man and also the square of six is 36 and if you take a list of figures if you go one two three four five six seven eight nine one plus two plus three plus four and and add all those numbers together up to 36 do you know what you get six 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 now what does that mean that means that about two dollars and that knowledge will get you a cup of coffee anywhere I'm just saying God's plan is perfect and many things work in strange ways but here you have his number and here you have that name now it is strange and the reason I wanted you to take kike stigma 5516 is because you will find it's three Greek letters the first and the last are the letters that uh, begin and end the word Christos do you understand what Christos is that's Greek for Christ the anointed one the true Christ and you add that little third letter in and kind of looks like a serpent to when you see it visually and you do have the serpent you have the false Christ all right I'm giving you this information because I feel that it strengthens the case though it actually alone makes no case did you hear what I said in and of itself it makes no case but it's little tidbits of information what is Satan coming as the false Christ is it not strange that the numerics in the Gemetra, meaning the Greek method of numbering, would be the first and the last letters in Christos because he's pretending to be the Christ? But this does, has nothing to do with what you were told to do. What were you told to do if, you see that word if is a big old word, if you have understanding, you were to count well count one two three four five no so naturally you need to go back to the language in which this was given to find out actually in the Greek what that word count means or what word in the Greek was used as your verb your action that that you were to do because if you don't know what you're supposed to do you're never going to get there so let's do that if we may let's call up the Greek word on our screen there and you find it is sefizo. it comes from basically the prime 5586 and don't ever forget 5586 I want you to remember that to use pebbles in enumeration pebbles that's rocks, stones you got it generally to compute okay but now let's pull up that 86 this is where it came from Safos. it's from the same as 5584 it wouldn't hurt you to know that a pebble as worn smooth by handling and by implication of use as a counter or ballot a verdict of acquittal or ticket of admission of vote all right well we know he's guilty before you take the vote but these pebbles are worn smooth over a long period of time of counting why you've got to know who, who is the fake rock stone it's Satan Tyrus in the Hebrew tongue his little children the Kenites are the little pebbles their spot is not our spot their rock is not our rock worn smooth over a long period of time meaning you've got to go back into history and check the migrations 
and to travel and wherever you find the little pebbles there you will find the chief Tyrus chief stone not our rock Satan so you count the number of the fake Christ by knowing his children and him now you were given this by the message to the churches all seven of them in chapters two and three in this book of Revelation there were only two of those churches that Christ found no not a zippo no fault with and right away if you have understanding if you got any brains at all and I'm talking very plain, and that's good. You know, whatever, it isn't the name of the churches that were called, but what they were doing, what they were teaching. Both those churches were teaching who these pebbles are. Those who claim to be of our brother Judah, but do lie, or Kenites, in fact, of the synagogue of Satan. I mean, it's brought, brought, drawn out where a child can understand. Now, I ask you to remember, I ask you to remember that Greek number 5586, okay? And for a very special reason, there's one other place, well, actually it's used twice in the same verse, but only in one verse is that, that particular Greek word used in the manuscripts. And you've read it in this book of Revelation. Do you know where it is? Do you know how to count? Hmm? Well, turn back with me, if you would, and you're not going to have it on the monitor because I'm going to make you do your homework. Chapter 2, verse 17. And listen to it carefully, and I will call the word for you because you won't recognize it in English. And that verse 17 read, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I don't, do you want to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to the churches? Then listen. Don't listen to some man in his traditions. Listen to Christ. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. That's truth. The in-depth knowledge. The understanding whereby you can count. And will give him a white stone. Do you know what that word stone is in the Greek? It's 5586 to enumerate by counting pebbles worn smooth over a long period of time. Do you want him to give that to you whereby you can count the number of the beast? I mean, you know, doesn't that sound complicated, the number of, of the beast? Simply to identify who the man is. And the book of Revelations does that for you quite handily. So, here you have it, sephoth, in the Greek, this stone, pebble, and in the stone, a new name written. Can you read it? Do you have enough understanding to count it, to read it? You should by now. Which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Do you know how to count? Well, I'll leave it there, because if you don't by now, you're not probably going to. Why? You wouldn't have eyes to see or ears to hear. Because you must enumerate the man's name and number, as it is simply told to where a five-year-old child knows who it's talking about, the son of perdition, the old dragon, the devil, Lucifer. Uh, isn't that complicated? I think not. The imitation Christos. And now, how could, how could we do? Let's just analyze here for a moment. Now, we've studied the six seals. Seven seals, rather. What happened in the sixth seal? De facto, Satan appeared on earth as Antichrist. Well, now, let's see. We've studied the trumps. What happened in the sixth trump? Uh, let me see now. I see the sixth trump. Was well, Satan appeared as Antichrist in the sixth trump? Well, now I haven't given you the vials yet, but I'm going to, and I will tell you. Do you know what the sixth vial? What happens there? 
you got it. They're all exactly the same because they just give you a little different focus from a different view so that people that are a little slow to understand can catch up. Satan appears. So the sixth seal, the sixth trump, and the sixth vial is the man's appearance who is Antichrist, which is Satan. Is there anything complicated about that? Well, I wonder if it's just an accident that they all turned out that. No, your father was teaching you. Your father wanted to make certain that you could not be deceived. If they tell you, hey, Christ is out in the valley, hey, he's in the desert, that you wouldn't go because you would know he was a fake. There's no great mystery in God's word for those with understanding. Count. That's your action. That's your verb. You learn it. You check it out in the Greek for yourself, even though you were showing it on this television screen. Take your Strong's Concordance. Check it out for yourself. Grow familiar with 5586 and even take it back to its prime 84. You will be helped if you're not familiar with it. You won't have any trouble. Do your homework. And there will be no doubt in your mind and you will have understanding. You know, Satan's coming to this earth, this false Christos, soon. He has a message. I'm going to fly you away. Many are helping him with that message today. It's kind of sad. It'd bring a tear to your eye when you stop and think about the biblical illiteracy that is in this world. Why? Because pastors will tell their flock, you don't have to understand the book of Revelation when it is the book of Revelation along with the rest of the word that tells you how to know and identify your enemy for it is the word of God and Christ in the living word that gives you direction and intelligence to the point that you can please God and be blessed by him. Or you can miss the boat. It's your choice. You make the decision. Don't try to, bra don't try to blame that pastor. Hey, you have no one to blame but yourself if you're unlearned. Because God sent this letter to you personally for your own edification, for your own uh, information whereby you could learn from for yourself, not listening to this man or any other man without checking him out in the word of God to know and understand. So that 13th chapter is a powerful chapter. It truly is. It gives you the method of operation that Satan will use, about, use to bring about or to bring to pass his New World Order, which you hear of today. Do you know that I was teaching that the New World Order would come 40 years ago, 50 even now? And it was a strange message at that time. But when you actually hear presidents and leaders of country talking about the New World Order, and everyone seeking the peace, 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 then biblical ears should be tingling with prophecy being fulfilled in your generation, the generation of the fig tree. So be alert, listen to the word, let those with understanding count. Now you see, it's too bad that people, you know, there'll be some nut come along and say, well what it really means they're gonna cut your forehead open and put a little computer chip in there. Well, there's just one thing wrong with putting a computer chip in your forehead. You're not wired for 120 yet, all right? Uh, but be that as it may, yeah, it could read, it would be the barcode. What, now, wouldn't Satan be smart to come down here with the little barcode and start stamping people? I mean, he, he's smarter than that. He's gonna deceive you by telling you, I've come to rapture you away, get in my bus. Do you think he will have trouble getting a load? I don't think so. Not when he can snap his fingers and make fire come from heaven as Elijah did before the 400 Baal priest or however many. Using those natural things and performing miracles in the sight of men as it stipulated back in verse 13 of this 13th chapter. 
they're going to go bonkers, nuts, that if they are biblically illiterate and have not studied the book of Revelation to know and understand the very events and how they come to pass to consummate the end of this age. How are you doing, friend? I hope that you're in your father's letter and I hope you're reading it with understanding. I hope you're paying attention to what he tells you to do. Count. Well, how do I count? Now you know by going to the Greek and I insist that you do it for your own edification. I've given you the Greek letters, numbers, in the Greek dictionary of your Strong's Concordance. Check it out for yourself. Because you're the one that's going to have to stand before God and explain how, if you should become deceived, how you were. Because he has given you detail by detail how not to be deceived. Hey, you're on your own. There will be no one standing with you on Judgment Day. You and God alone when he opens that book to see what is written by your name. And may it not be that he will open that book and say, well, there's old revolving rev and marked right beside his name, stupid, stupid, stupid. Biblically illiterate, biblically illiterate. I hope that's not you. I hope that you've read the letter with understanding. Do I do that to insult? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Because I cannot understand a pastor that would have the nerve to tell a parishioner, a student, that they didn't have to know God's Word. Because I'm going to tell you something, Pastor. Your old feet, if you've ever had uh, athletes' feet where they just burn, you better get used to it because your feet are gonna burn. The hot coals are gonna burn around you as a false shepherd. Oh, how God hates false shepherds, false pastors. And he said it, not me. If you've ever read the word, the letter, you know what he thinks of false leaders. He's got a real nice place for them. And guess what? Judgment starts with them. So. If you're one of those that tell your people not, they don't have to understand God's word just to listen to you, get ready, you know. I, I, maybe I can get a job shoveling the coals to make it a little hotter and blow, turning on the air to blow them up where they'll really get you good, all right? That's really what I'm doing right now. There's no reason for you to be in that position. God doesn't wink at ignorance. Not when you claim to be a pastor. Chapter 14, let's talk about it just a little bit. I guess I took a long time to cover two verses, but be that as it may, perhaps it was necessary. Chapter 14 has to do with a time, it has to do with the earth. It's important. Chapter 15, 14 and 15 follow the fact that we have the victory, okay? Uh, 15, chapter 15 has to do with heaven. Chapter 14 has to do with earth. And you need to separate that in your mind so that you can see the picture of what's going to happen. And um, here we begin to learn what happens as the true Christ does return and what transpires. Chapter 14, verse 1, having to do with earth. Listen to it. Verse 1, and it reads, And I looked... This is John on the Lord's day looking. And lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion. And naturally, that's Christ has returned to uh, the Mount of Olives and has crossed over to Zion. And with him in 140, 140 and 4,000, having his father's name written in their forehead. Whoa, 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 who are they? Oh, you read it back in chapter 7. Don't you remember? Chapter 7, turn there with me. You're not going to have it on the screen because I'm going to make you do a little bit of your own homework. Try to get your mind to unscramble some of these verses. Let's read verse 3, if I'm not mistaken. When the angels were told, 
the four angels that hold the four winds of the earth to stop the end. They had something they had to do. What was it? Verse 3, the angels, the big one saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads, meaning in their brains, teaching them the truth of God's word, whereby they would know how to react. And I heard the number of them that were sealed, it was 140 and 4,000. So there shouldn't be any great mystery to that. <clears throat> These are the people that perhaps you planted a seed with the truth and they kind of snuffed at you and maybe even snickered and smiled and maybe walked away. But then when you, remember, keep, keep up with me in time, chapter 14 is after the Antichrist has appeared and Christ is on Mount Zion. This is after the fact. After you were delivered up and you, the Holy Spirit begins to speak through you, Quite frankly, a prophet, a prophecy is not a prophecy until after the fact, meaning after it comes to pass. That's powerful to people. When you predict a thing and it comes to pass exactly that way, and that's what happens. Those people, perhaps, that you think did not hear and that you wasted your time with, and you get a little bored thinking, well, I must not be very good. I just plant seeds and they never take hold. That's not your business. That's God's business to see whether a seed takes hold. And when you're delivered up, as it's written in Mark 13, and you allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you, they're going to say, oh, wait a minute. This person told me this would happen and he would be doing the same thing, or someone would, when this false Christ, false Christ, he is the false Christ. So they come out of her. The ones that are sealed before fact. And quite frankly, in the millennium chapters, I'm speaking of the book of Ezekiel from chapter 40 to the end, it stipulates there very clearly that the Levitical priest, which is the 144,000, and they're not necessarily of the tribe of Levi, when Israel went astray, they went astray also. Meaning, they were deceived for a moment. But understand, before, before Christ returned, they had the privilege of hearing you. Your testimony, which in fact is the Holy Spirit's testimony, and repenting. And therefore, when you repent, you became a new body and they were virgins in the spiritual sense. Do you understand? That's important. We'll be, we'll be call, I'll be calling on that in the next lecture. It's important that you know why these 144,000 were virgins spiritually. Meaning, they hadn't bowed a knee to Baal, to Satan, after their conversion. And that's why it's so important when you repent, you become a new creature. That you see that and know it. That he, he paid an awesome price on the cross. That you have that right. Don't you ever forget it. Well, I'm out of time. My, my, we didn't cover many verses today, but we covered a lot of really wonderful truth from God's Word. I hope He touched you with it. Don't miss the next lectures. They're very important. Listen a moment, won't you please?